Okay, so uh, I'm Bob Harrington. We're running our workshop outside at the uh, at Herald Square. Our models are meeting us there at about uh, 145, uh, 150. We'll knock off around 130, 135 from in here. We'll all head down there. It gives us plenty of time to walk down there, grab a quick cup of coffee if you want one, or a hot chocolate or tea, whatever, because uh, it's not warm out. All right, so I hope you're all dressed to shoot outside. Uh, I am. I'm ready to go. I cannot wait. I'm dying to get outside uh, to work uh, in the nor Northeast. This is the time when you start to get outside. <sighs> okay. So welcome to the B&H Photo Event Space uh, Small Flash Shooting Workshop in Herald Square. We have a few things, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Robert Harrington. You can call me Bob. Robert Harrington Studios is my website. Uh, Robert Harrington Studios at WordPress is my blog. Jump onto the blog and hit the follow button. Every time I update it, you will get an update. I'm always teaching. So uh, whether I'm shooting professionally, shooting uh, an event, shooting headshots, whatever it is, you'll always find some element of uh, education on my page. Okay? Um, I just did a fitness shoot about two weeks ago. I show you the uh, top four or five images that I like the best, and then either behind the scenes photos or a diagram of how I set it up and the gear that I'm using. Okay, so every time I post, there's something about education. My Twitter account's Bob Harrington too, and my Facebook is Robert Harrington Studios. Um, trying to promote that more. I'm not very good at social media, so my goal this year was to expand my presence in social media. Uh, I don't know about you guys, I come from that age where uh, I grew up without social media, so it's, it's hard for me to transition into it still, even though it's been like eight years. My books, um, my book Photographic Lighting is available on Amazon.com. Uh, my second book, One Speed Light, 16 Looks, I self-publish on Blurb. Uh, One Speed Light, 16 Looks is a great uh, little book. It's only 60 pages, a lot of great tips and techniques, how I do things. Uh, one light source, 16 different ways, and it's all with speed lights. Okay? And I also write freelance for Shutterbug Magazine. So you'll find me in there um, every couple of months I have an article. Uh, run through them. Our gear for today. Um, I always do the gear list in case you've never been with me, never seen a video with me, or are just starting out or looking to replace gear. Um, I always give the gear list. Uh, our light stands are Manfrotto 1052 BACs. They're lightweight. Um, they fold flat. They're also known as quick stackers. Uh, Lumo Pro LP633 umbrella brackets. That's the bracket that attaches to the stand and you slide your speed light onto. Um, we're using Fotix Ares radio triggers today. Uh, the Ares is a basic trigger. It's uh, very similar to uh, other brands where it just tells the flash to fire. Okay, every camera will work with this. I've shot this with my Nikon. Um, I shot last night with a Canon 5D Mark II and I shot with a Phase 1 645 uh, DF. Uh, with one of these and it worked like a champ absolutely perfectly okay it's a basic trigger system the batteries in my flashes are Ansman 2850 milliamp I use Ansman chargers uh, all available here uh, Nikon SD9 and SDAA battery packs and Nikon SB910 and SB800 flashes okay um, one quick note all my batteries were charged we're ready to go for the day if you see that the flash is not recharging fast enough, and quite possibly the flashes are going down, let me know. I have a full bag of spare batteries. We'll just swap them right out for you. Okay, and everybody can keep shooting. Gear continued. Uh, we'll be using the Rogue Flash Bender XL Pro. That's this tall strip soft box here. Um, that comes as a kit, and the, so the strip model, the strip soft box part of it is really what makes this uh, thing, this modifier, uh, amazing. Because you can do so much with it. All right? You buy it as a kit. It comes with a large diffusion panel. It comes with the strip diffusion panel. And I really like this. Because this is a hair light. It's a key light. Um, you can do over and under beauty. It's really a great um, modifier. We'll be using the Rogue Grid. I use the Rogue Grid a lot as an accent light. But we're going to use it today as a key light. We're really going to try and do something different for you guys. Okay? Uh, and the Fotix Luna Beauty Dish. The Beauty Dish is a, a collapsible folding dish that we'll talk about when we get on location. Um, I brought it down in a bag, collapsed, I opened it up. The great thing about it is that you can change the ring in the back 
and take the ring off from the speed light ring and put any ring on it for any other strobe light. So I have a <coughs> ring for my Profoto light, and I can use that, or my, a ring for my Hensel lights. And I can put that on one of my uh, larger lighting sources. And it's, not, it's a really affordable uh, beauty dish. Okay, today's a shooting workshop, so let's do some more household work. Um, one photographer at a time. All right, I'm going to split you guys up into groups of three. We have three models on location, and uh, it's one photographer at a time. All right, I am that third grade teacher that you hated because that person was so strict. If you fail to follow the rules, you will be called out upon. You will go into the corner and sit in the chair. Until everybody's done, then you can go. Okay, I'm, if you've ever taken a workshop with me, you know that I'm like that. Um, please turn off your continuous frame rate. Here's this, this is all my equipment. Uh, please don't shoot like 10 photographs at once, like a sports photographer, brrr, because you'll burn one of my flashes out, and I'd rather like to go home with my flashes intact. Okay, be respectful of the current photographer. Whoever is in the scene shooting with the model, let them do their thing. Okay, uh, watch out for foot traffic, especially here in New York. Nothing will draw attention to us faster than impeding foot traffic. So if a mom is walking by with her baby in a stroller, let her pass, okay? When you're in your group, please pay attention to that so that we're not accosted or, um, you know, have security upon us, which is really uncool. Um, however, take a behind the scenes shot. When you're done in the station, step back and take a photograph of the entire scene, how the light is set up, how things are working, okay? I have a full folder of these where I can go back to and see what I've done. And you'll see a couple of photos here. Um, there's absolutely no physical contact with the models. None. If they have a hair emergency, you ask them to <laughs> fix it. If their jacket collar is turned in, you ask them to turn it out. Okay? There's no physical contact uh, with the model at all. Um, no deviation from the setup or the look. These kinds of events are really difficult for me. I have to go to a location. I don't know what the traffic looks like, what the crowd looks like, what, how we're going to be shooting. So it's up to me to give you a location to shoot in quickly, and then you shoot and move along. If you deviate from the setup, then everybody who shot before you is going to want to come back around and reshoot that setup again. Okay? These events are less about you getting that Vogue cover shot than about you learning to light, or learning to light outside, learning to work with a model, okay? things of this nature using gear that you may not have used before or even seen, okay, then this is less about getting that perfect shot than it is about exper the experience, all right? If you get the perfect shot, that's awesome. That's, I'm, I'm happy for you because I always try to get that. But remember, too, that there are other people here with you, okay? Our basic settings, we're going to start with a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second. Our aperture will be 5.6. Um, we'll probably underexpose by about two-thirds of a stop outside to darken the outside. Uh, ISO 200, that is the base for my camera, so we're going to work with that ISO. Um, you can set your white balance to daylight or direct sunlight, uh, which is what I do. I keep my white balance on daylight, and I know I get a really great result. Um, I like color tone to be neutral. Uh, I will adjust white balance later if I have to. And again, please turn off your continuous frame rate. Uh, one shot at a time. Also remember these are speed lights. You don't have the recycle time you do on a strobe light, so you're not, you're not nailing 10 shots in a row. It's one shot, one shot, one shot. Okay, here's us working last year in Herald Square. Um, I have a uh, speed light in a Westcott Rapid Box over here and a large uh, Rogue XL Pro here in the strip box format. And this is, the next shot is what came out of my camera. No retouching, no Photoshop. This is a, a complete raw to JPEG uh, conversion. And that was it. It's really pretty, it's a lot of fun. Okay, it's a lot of fun. I think this is the photo that's on the web page, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this is one of my favorite shots. My key light gave me all my main light here and the two models. And the XL Pro in the back gave me a little lens flare and edge light on both gals to separate them from the background, okay? This was towards the end, and it was great if we have the time, we'll put all three models together and we'll light them with all three lights, all right? Uh, the Rogue Flash Bender setup, attach it to your speed light, 
A good tip is to reverse the flash bender so that it's facing the back. What that does for you is that if you tip your flash bender forward, if you tip the speed light forward, the head will have a tendency to go forward because the flash bender is fairly heavy. If you reverse it and tip it this way, then the head won't fall for you. It will stay uh, permanent. It will stay uh, in one, one place. Um, you can bend the, the, uh, the unit to your need. You can add the soft box attachment or the strip soft box attachment. Today I want to work with the strip soft box to show you something of that nature. Uh, for outside, I don't put the plastic diffusers on. So I'm trying to get as much light as I can. Okay? You have to remember speed lights are not as powerful as a strobe light. So you really have to get as much light as you can out of your modifier. Uh, another tip is to zoom your head. You can zoom the, the flash head to 105 or 200 millimeters or however far it will go, taking the spread of light from here to here. I normally leave my speed lights at the default, which is like 17 millimeters. I always leave them wide. I fill those boxes up as much as I can and get as much light out as I can. But this is a good tip. You can do that. Here we're shooting in Maryland. Um, my key light on the right is a uh, XL Pro as a strip softbox. I have two, another modifier on the left, um, adding some rim light here, and it's two rogue uh, flash benders just put together to make a strip light. Here we are working in the group. If you ever get the chance to work in a parking garage, work in a parking garage. They're graphic, they're fun, just don't get hit by a car. Okay? It's always a possibility and it's always like one of the dangers that exists. The rogue grid. I use the grid a lot as a backlight, hair light, uh, accent light, things of that nature. Today I want to use it just as its own key light. We just use the grid as a single light source. Okay? Um, the, these are amazing. It is one of the best products that they have in the marketplace. I used to carry an old photogenic 7-inch reflector from an old photogenic strobe light with a 20-degree grid in it. I sawed off the back of it and I just mangled it to get onto my speed light. And when I found these, that got thrown away, and these now, now live in my bag. And I carry two of these with me most of the time. You threw them away, we're scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I actually put them on the shelf. The 20 degree grid, I say, we'll go over that because the grid comes in, will come in later. Um, you have 45 degrees, 25 degrees, and 16 degree grid options. So you have a lot of availability to modify your light, okay? It also works great as a small snoot without the grid holder. Take the grid holder and you have this great little snoot to control some of the light as a hair light or something like that. It's really a unique uh, and fantastic tool because it has so much to offer. Oops, that's not the right one. Here we are using it outside. This is in Madison Square Park um, about a year and a half ago, I believe, if I remember correctly. My key light is a XL Pro in the strip soft box. My fill light is an XL Pro as a regular softbox, and my grid is right here, and I'm wrapping the model in light, key, fill, and edge, and this is the final. And um, that's, not, that's an unretouched final. That's a, what I got right out of the camera. All right? It's a, it was a bright, sunny day, and also chilly again. I guess I'm kind of drawn to chilly days. I don't know. So that's a final out of the camera. All right? Here we are shooting. Uh, in Madison Square Park again, this is the importance of paying attention to the traffic, all right, the foot traffic. We blocked traffic, and then the um, security guard came over and kicked us out. So I went across the street. This is the Credit Suisse building, and we shot here with a uh, regular rogue flash bender as key, fill, and a grid right here. And we're working in the shade uh, in broad daylight and wound up with that. And again, that's right out of the camera. I've not done any processing on it, having no Photoshop, nothing. Okay, if, you, if you're just moving into off-camera flash, when you're taking your flashes off the camera, putting them onto a light stand, um, if you don't know how to use TTL, work in manual mode. Take your flash out of TTL and put it in M for manual. So for you Canon guys, it's easy. You go from ETTL to M for manual. For your Nikon shooters, um, you have a series, like an arm's length of choices. GN, RPT, AA, I think there's something else before you hit M for manual. All right, I set all my main flashes at a half power, then I'll adjust shutter speed, aperture, ISO, or flash output. 
um, depending on what I'm doing and where we're working. So you go from TTL, hit the mode button right here. This is an old SB900. Doesn't matter, every flash will have a mode button on it if you can go from one uh, setting to another. Hit the button, go down to M for manual, one over two is half power, okay? Think of it like a, uh, a measuring cup with milk in it, right? One over one is full power, one over two is half, right on down the line. The nice thing about speed lights is that you can draw the power down so much that you can actually shoot at wide apertures easily. Uh, you can shoot at F2, F1.4, and add some fill light because this power setting can go down to like 1 over 128, which is literally almost nothing coming out of the flash, but will help you to shoot at a wider aperture. Sharing. Um, when I ran this event previously, it was really a full house. So we went to eight frames per, per photographer per your time with the model. We're gonna push that, we're gonna push that to 10. So we'll start off with 10, we'll see how we go. So you step into your model, you can take 10 frames. Then you step out, next person goes in. You have a trigger on top of your camera, just pull it off, hand it to the person behind you, right on down the line. I'm trying something new this year. I'm trying to slow the entire process down a little bit because it can get pretty harried and it gets, can get kind of crazy. So um, we'll go over that at the end, how we're gonna run the event. Um, share being a lighting assistant. If you live in New York, you know you can't put a tripod or light stand down on the ground without uh, a permit. So all we do is raise the legs up on the light stand and you put it on the front of your foot. Keep it on your foot and you can move the light stand as long as it doesn't touch the ground. We are cool and we are good to go, <clears throat> all right? Share the responsibilities and of traffic control. All right, if you're, you, if you're the uh, assistant holding the light, right, you're gonna pass it to somebody else and then you share that responsibility, <coughs> okay? Just pay attention to everything and that's all. Uh, only one person shoots at a time so the model knows where to look. My events do not turn into free-for-alls. All right, I'm very strict about that because I think everybody should get their time in the station with the model. Um, and definitely shoot behind the scenes natural light. Uh, but be respectful of who's in the station. All right, we'll talk about the Fotix Luna Beauty Dish. This is a great piece of equipment uh, that Fotix sent me. Um, it folds down like an umbrella, very similar to an umbrella. You just open the legs up and push the thumb things down and it, it becomes taut. It comes with the central disc, like a traditional beauty dish. It also comes with a diffusion screen. Okay, like a traditional beauty dish has that. And you turn the dish into fairly a, a round soft box. I left the diffusion screen out. We're gonna go straight up beauty dish today, okay? Um, you can install the central disc, comes with a diffusion sock. Uh, the bracket on the back is the speed light bracket that allows you to put a speed light and mount everything together. It's based on a Bowens uh, studio strobe system. It's the Bowens mount. The great thing about this is that you can unscrew the Bowens mount and put a separate mount in for another strobe light. So this is a modifier that swaps easily between speed lighting and strobe lighting. I have uh, extra rings for Profoto and for Hensel, okay? Um, the other tip, which is a great tip, which is where I used my old 20 degree grid, is you pop the central disc off and take an old seven inch reflector uh, grid, like 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and you stick it right over the three prongs. Now you have a different look. You have more light coming through the center and a lot of fall off around the edges. Okay, that's a completely different look that you can do with this unit. So here it is, uh, it's on a Hensel strobe. We have my model standing there, I was doing some test shots. Okay, so I swapped the, the, the ring out. It's on a Hensel strobe. Here's a simple headshot. Okay, showing the beautiful quality of light, makes her skin glow. Right, it's outstanding. You can see every pore on her face, which is beautiful for me. Right, yeah, so you wanna see all that detail, okay? I set it up again to do uh, a beauty style headshot and I got um, that headshot. That's completely out of the camera. There's no retouching at all with that, all right? So the quality of light is amazing. Um, I would do a little retouching to it, but it's pretty, I'm pretty good with it, you guys? Have fun, relax, have fun. If you did the Highline with us, this is Bernadette. She's my dear friend. 
It's a large rogue flashbender. We're shooting on the High Line. She's having a blast, right? Having more fun than I am. Have fun, relax, enjoy, help others in the station. If you find somebody having a problem and not, I'm not available, please help them if you can. Um, share your finished images with the models if possible. Um, some of them bring their cards with them, some of them do not. Um, if they do, grab a card or give them your card and have them contact you and share the uh, photos with them. Part of their paid package with me is that they get all the photos that I take. Uh, they know that they don't get that many from me because I'm, it's so crazy for me, but that's part of their, their incentive to come out for us, okay? Uh, and that's it. Have fun, relax, enjoy. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.